We're here in Studio 113 in Gainesville, Georgia with a very, very talented young man, Andrew Arrowwood. Now, let's start off with something that you read an article that involved a student X. It was called, uh, Do You Know Me? The Voice of a Disgruntled Student in a Boring Class. Did you relate to Student X? Well, yes, actually, I believe I related uh, to Student X along with uh, many of my peers have also related to Student X. Uh, so many times in class we're just trying to get through, you know, get our grades, uh, turn in our work and go home, you know, not worried about learning or the process of education, but worried about getting our grade. Okay, and I, I like how you kind of phrase that. You said just getting through the day sometimes. It feels like that. Yeah. Okay. If you could improve public education, what maybe two or three things would you change and why? Well, I think um, I think the first thing that I would change would be to remove or change the grade point average grading scale. Okay. Uh, I feel that in a lot of ways it's unfair and also it it makes you feel like you know that's the only thing that's important because you know all you ever hear from the counselors or uh, anybody really is get your GPA up, get your GPA up. That's the number one thing when really a lot of times your GPA just shows how well you manage work, not what you can do. Okay, so you feel like sometimes it makes a student a number? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Anything else you would change about education? Um, well, I had, had the thought of changing the classroom the way the students are organized per class because, uh, well, every student learns differently and every teacher teaches differently. Mm -hmm. So if there was some way to pair the students and the teachers that would learn the best together, then I think that would make for, you know, optimal output. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to go through and look at what types of personalities students and the teachers have, how they like to learn, how they like to teach. So it would almost be like you were selecting your class, but you're selecting your teacher also. Yes. As opposed to just selecting a class and then you get whatever teacher you get. Yeah. Right? Kind of a tough one maybe, but you are now a high school principal, but you're still a student. Oh, what wow. types of teachers do you hire? You know, their education, where they've came from, what all they know, and how suit they are to fit, or how fit they are to teach a certain topic. Right. And then after that, I would look at, you know, what they want to do. Is that what they wanted? Is their mission to teach and to help kids and help people learn and not just to, uh, you know, get your paycheck and have a job. <laughs> yeah. But what, what, type of quali what types of qualities would you say, well, that teacher, I think that teacher's excellent because he or she has what? Uh, energy. Energy. Okay. And not just, uh, not just, you know, physical energy, but moral energy. Oh. Being able to go through the day and even though, you know, stuff is going to happen. You're not, it's never going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But being able to deal with that role with the punches and keep going and, uh, you know, on a mission, being so, focused. So you think great teachers are really, really tough? Some of them are. Some of the best teachers I've ever had have been outrageously tough. You know, that's that teacher that other kids are like, oh, you don't want her, she's strict. But, you know, sometimes strictness is good when it, when it needs to be. And what types of teachers would you have to go to and say, look, I'm sorry, but we're just not going to be able to use you? Hmm. The teachers that are there and don't want to be. If you don't want to be there, then we don't want you there. Can you sense that, Andrew? Uh, I believe yes. How, how do you sense that from a teacher who doesn't want to be in the classroom? They try to avoid thought. They try to avoid, you know, thinking and, and actually coming up with new plans and doing new stuff, trying to figure out ways to learn better. They just go with what they've been given, you know, teach the standards, post them up on the wall. and. Okay, very interesting. How about this one? This one's a hot one, and uh, I think it comes down to control and trust. But do you think smartphones should be allowed and used in the classroom? Why or why not? Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely, wow. it should be allowed. Uh, because this device right here that used to take up a whole room can now fit in the palm of my hand and do so much more things. Okay. And it's not something that we should rely on as a second brain, but more of an additive to what we already have. You know, a, a structured 
for people who are just completely scattered a lot of times. Like me, I know I forget stuff all the time. Well, you know, the reminder apps help you all kinds of stuff. And okay. it also, it, it can bring the teacher and the student closer together in ways that it can, you can let your teacher know sometimes without having to raise your hand and be that weird kid in class that, you know, oh, I don't want to ask this question because I'll look dumb, you know. Just send them a text or email or whatever. All right, very cool. Do you think it should be monitored at all, the smartphone? Um, or just you're loud and we trust you? Oh. Tough one, huh? That is a tough one. I believe it should be monitored a little bit. Mm -hmm but not as overbearing mm -hmm. to where it makes it useless and pointless. Okay, because it's so valuable as a learning tool. Yes. If you were to talk to a teacher right now and say, hey, we need to do some things that are interest, interesting to us, passions and talents and hobbies and things that we're good at, and I know you've got to you know, teach us this literature or this math or this science, but how can you integrate what the student wants and what the teacher's got to have done. What would, what would be your suggestions? Uh, one of the big things, uh, passion-based learning. Okay. The, I know you do that a lot with uh, mm -hmm. projects that'll be able to let the student say, "This is what you. This is what we want to do." Mm -hmm. And the teacher looks at this and says, "If you can prove to me with the skills that." you have and the things that you love doing that you can learn this and master these standards or or you know really learn the stuff more than just filling out a worksheet if you can prove that with something that you love doing I think it's a win-win for the teacher and the student I know all about your talents and your skills and I had heard about you before you came into the classroom I'm sure all the other teachers have um, but can you just kind of clarify for our audience your talents and what you're into and I'm thinking they get a hint by what's <laughs> behind us here but tell us about yourself. Well uh, really it's just been a roller coaster I think it started off uh, in middle school probably sixth grade when I met my technology teacher at the Da Vinci Academy uh, he said oh he saw me drawing one day and he said hey you should come and look at our graphics design class and then from there it got me real interested in computers and how they work and then and then it got me interested in graphic design and from there it just led on to bigger and more complicated things and then eventually now my biggest thing has been video and cinematography trying to learn how to how to convey a story and tell an audience something using video and camera movements and so you're a young Steven Spielberg right uh, hope but so. more importantly you're an Andrew Arrowwood right <laughs> now Think about this right here. Um, you were talking about your your graphics, um, getting into graphic arts and things like that. Didn't I hear that you were Adobe certified with some type of software? Adobe certified yes. in so Photoshop and Dreamweaver. All right, cool. Which is Photoshop's photo editing, and Dreamweaver is uh, it's web based. It's a web based program. That lets you launch websites and create your own HTML files and. Okay. And so you're always doing something digitally, right? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do at your church? Well, at my church, uh, I try to do as much as I can, you know, just help out with videos. And our church is really a technology, yeah, it's really technology based, and they do a lot of things. With, they develop apps for mm -hmm. prayer and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. and just well, I know you had shown me, shown me at one time you had done a commercial and you put it together yourself, correct? Yes. So you're doing some of those types of things? Uh, trying to find small businesses and even friends that say hey I want to sing you know just go out and do something with my talents and try to help them with their talents. Okay so fast forward 20 30 years from now I see you right and you say oh you're still bald-headed and ugly Mr. Hardison but when you see me you're like I'm so happy because let me tell you what I'm doing with my life what will you say at that time? Well I would love to continue on with uh, video making and cinematography. Okay. Uh, I think I would lean more towards directing rather than actually being the cinematographer and the person behind the camera because once you do get on up there it, the roles tend to split and you can't just do it all anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I just like to be able to, I would love to be able to direct and tell my own story. Right. You know write, uh, write and shoot and edit and work with a whole bunch of other people who are doing something that they love to do 
and create something that everyone else is going to love to watch. All right, but I got a challenging question for you. Let's just play devil's advocate here, right? So I'm in some other class. Maybe it's science. Maybe it's PE. Maybe it's math. It could be anything, foreign language. And you come to me as a teacher and you say, hey, teacher, I want to integrate some of what I like to do into what we need to learn. What if I'm like, well, how can I integrate that into this course or this course? What would you say to me? PE would be a little bit difficult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think there's always a way to be able to integrate things. And, you know, it's just it's having a good balance between doing the things that you have to do mm -hmm. and doing the things that you want to do. You know, it's kind of like driving a five-speed. you gotta, you got to have the right balance between clutch and gas, otherwise you're <laughs> just going to stall out and no one's going to get anywhere. Right, right. And I totally agree with you, too. I, I believe that if we just kind of come together as teachers and students and, and take the time to talk about, well, I never thought about that way, and, and maybe in PE class you could film this and turn it into a video tutorial on how to lift weights here or, you know, do some kind yeah. of a drill, whatever it may be. So I think we just got to have the time to come together, and especially with talent like you, it'd be a shame to be in that classroom and then at the in the last week of school to say, oh, I didn't know he was so talented in that area. Oh, year's over now. So we've got to really guard against that, I think. Yeah. All right, so why don't you do this? Why don't you take the, the final time here and just uh, maybe show us some of these gadgets you have brought because it's quite impressive what either you've gotten from Santa Claus yeah. or maybe what you uh, have actually built. So if you will, I'll take that chair and you okay. can kind of walk it up here and, and talk to us a bit. Well, the first piece of equipment that I had uh, that I had on my list was getting a camera. I had been shooting uh, previously. I had before I had gotten into you know cinematography and video making. I had been using my iPhone to make videos and uh, do other projects with. And then people realized they said, "Hey, he actually enjoys doing this. You know, we don't. It's it's going to be fun for us and him. So we'll ask him to make our videos." And uh, from there, I realized you know it's time to get some equipment and actually do a bit better so the first thing I needed to get was a camera and yeah, uh, that's a little bit different than the iPhone now I'm an iPhone guy yeah. you mentioned you were using iPhone and now <laughs> yeah well Canon T3i it actually they had never been using they have not been using DSLRs for uh, video and cinematography until someone one day said hey there's a video function on this camera I bet it takes great pictures and then they were like yes wow this is amazing and Big companies, Canon and Nikon, started actually making their DSLRs into video products rather than a pictures. rig, a follow focus, I don't know if they could see it there, and uh, the map box, which all of this combined allows you to bring a small camera, like I said, was made for handheld shots, made for uh, home videos, that allows you to give it more of a Hollywood, a bigger camera feel because, you know, if you were holding a, a small camera, it would be shaking and drawing around to where this any kind of motion would be smooth and drawn out due to so the weight. quality is greatly improved. Oh, the next thing I got after the camera was the tripod, but it's kind of, sort of simple. I got that one from Santa as well. Uh, the next thing that I made was the camera jib. And uh, this is more of a jib crane. <laughs> you can mount the camera to the tip here. And this whole plate right here, actually, you unscrew it and it removes. And it slides off to go on the next project. But uh, basically, this just allows you to get a higher angle and or a lower angle without having to uh, have some massive crane or lift or suspension system for it. The next piece that I made was a camera slider. It lets you get it. It's pretty much it's a portable version of the dolly that you see in Hollywood with the big tracks and there's someone sitting on it. But for this one, you can uh, you can take it anywhere. You can take it out in the middle of the woods and not have to set up tracks and. <laughs> Stuff of that nature. So those came off some roller blades or skates? Yes, these were uh, these used to be <laughs> roller skates, and I took off the wheels, put a spacer in between the bearings, and clamped them together with band iron and a socket box for um, electrical work. Wow. Wow. Well, I, I'm pretty sure I know what this is, but after seeing that, this right here doesn't seem like too much. No. Yeah. Well, this is just a boom pole with a uh, the Rode video mic on it, a decent entry level mic, and it really allows us to get good audio which is I think is the biggest mistake that people make with their movies is you know, not having good audio. It's, uh, 
It's the best part now, to a video. Let's finish with this. I see we're going to finish talking about uh, what all you have built here, but I forgot. We have got to talk about what you and your, your club, your, your peers, your friends are doing right now outside of school and maybe in conjunction with uh, a literature class. What are y'all doing? Well, for your class, we were, uh, we were originally assigned a short story project, I think is what it was. And uh, at the time, me and my, some of my friends, about 10 of us, had been, we had already been stoked up and planning to do another movie because of a previous project that we had in literature class. And uh, so 10 of us, we started getting online and writing script together, uh, you know, one, one, two, three in the morning, up writing, uh, writing script just so we can make our next movie. And uh, then we realized we were going to have to have a short story where we show how we can put all these, uh, put all these different standards into a project that is something so you basically we basically married what you kind of need to do for a certain class and then you married it with a passion that you and some of your friends have in the movie making and so you're kind of morphing those together absolutely the main thing that you know I've been learning from you and your team is, is how y'all are doing this on your own you just said two or three in the morning you're writing a script using Adobe Adobe story Adobe story and so you plan on having this video done when uh, hopefully by the end of January. Okay. And then your last movie that you made for a literature class, that was about a 25-minute movie with special effects, correct? Uh, yes, very t terrible special effects. But, you know, oh, you live and learn. Yeah. Live and learn. Uh, but now, will that video be posted anytime soon, you think, yes. on your YouTube channel? Yes, it, okay. it'll be posted. Okay. Uh, there's some other small things that I've done, but I've not really kept up with my YouTube channel. Okay. Let's finish right here. So, you look into the camera, and you tell all the teachers in the world what's the one advice you would give them to allow students to be as creative as possible. What would you say? Get to know your students and get to know what they love to do. And then once you know those two things, you can take something that they love doing and be able to show how you can learn and teach mm -hmm. something else. You know, mm -hmm. teach something through a passion that somebody has. Absolutely. Hey, thank you so much for your time and thank you for all that I've learned from you in our classes and all through this school. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. All right.